Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the recording now. And um, we'll just focus on the, um, uh, on the presentation. So um, we'll get started because um, the starting time was uh, 2.15 Hawaii time. So uh, I want to thank you all for, for, for showing up. I know it's after school for you. So um, as an extracurricular, I, I really appreciate you, you joining. Um, Chloe, it's a real pleasure to, to meet you. I know we met very briefly in passing a couple weeks ago at the, at the, at the lab um, via Zoom. So it's great to, to have this face-to-face -face with you here. So um, as, as you guys all know, um, this presentation, or as you may have been um, um, informed previously, this presentation is about open science. So I'll go into a little bit more about what does open science mean? What, what, what's the difference between science and open science? We'll, we'll get into that during the presentation. The presentation will be probably about 20 minutes um, and there's plenty of time for question and answer. So, so please, um, please consider this a, a, an open dialogue. Um, it's, it, you know, it's a conversation, it's an open dialogue. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask any questions along the way. Um, let me introduce myself very briefly. My name is Paige Donner, and uh, I'm actually a graduate of UH Manoa um, a long time ago now. <laughs> um, and I have the, the honor and the privilege of working with Dr. Asimov and his team on the Hawaii Aspiring Aerospace Engineers Academy. Um, so, you know, we're very excited about this program and um, really, really, uh, you know, honored and, and so pleased that NASA is supporting um, you know, outreach and STEM inclusion and workforce development in this way. Uh, I, having grown up um, on, on Guam myself, um, I know just how, um, how remote sometimes that thing, things can feel. Uh, when I grew up, it was pre-internet days, so so things felt really remote back then. <laughs> um, but so so we just really um, I'm just really happy to be part of, of this of this program. So let me let me start with the slides, and then um, feel free to stop me uh, along the way. So the reason why, um, well, you know, what one of the reasons why we're presenting open science and integrating it into the Hawaii um, Aeros Aspiring Aerospace Academy, uh, and, and, and Hawaii Aspiring Aerospace Engineers Academy, um, is because actually NASA is doing a lot with open science. So um, as, you, uh, as you may see from this slide, um, open science is, um, it's a global effort to increase participation in science and access to scientific research for people and communities everywhere. So one of the things that people have recognized, um, a global community has recognized is that science can sometimes be closed, right? People do their research in their different disciplines, whether it's in the biosciences or engineering or aerospace, um, medicine, a lot of times scientific research will happen within disciplines and also within regions or within groups or academic institutions. And sometimes um, what they say, what, what they call happens is a, is a silo, right? So information stays within a certain group rather than it having, uh, it being shared. And when information is not shared, it can become, um, um, it, it can become, you know, static, right? It's like if you know something um, and your friend or your classmate really needs to know it, but somehow you're not sharing that information, that information isn't going to do your classmate any good because they don't have access to it. So it's really as simple as that. Now, um, one of the great things about so NASA TOPS stands for Transform to Open Science, and I dropped a link in the chat. So if you take a look in the chat, um, the the top chat is a link to the NASA Transform to Open Science website. 
Um, uh, just a, cu a couple more words uh, about me, and then I'll I'll jump right in. Um, so I'm um, I'm the owner of IoT Logistics LLC, and through that, through my company, I'm subcontracting um, to to Hiaya and UH Manoa um, to, as, as a subcontractor to, to NASA. And you can find me next at my main page, Donner, and also at OpenSci for All. Um, so again, very pleased to be uh, a part of this Hiaya team and really happy to be, to be working with you all. Um, okay, so let's, let's jump right into to NASA, um, NASA Tops. So um, in, I'm gonna, in, I'm, I'll go through all of this slide by slide, but just to set the stage for you all. Um, in 2022, late 2022, the, the White House, the United States White House, uh, declared 2023 to be the year of open science. So we're just, we're just finishing up 2023 now, as we all know. Um, but this whole year has been devoted to open science. Um, and, and that followed on an executive order in um, 2022 that said that all federal funded research has to be released open, openly and to, and to the public immediately. So there were um, mandates and recommendations in place prior that said that any federally funded research, now when you talk about federally funded research, you're talking about massive quantities of research that happens uh, in, in the United States. It's all, it's a lot of, almost all academic institutions, that's federal labs, that's research institutes, that's private, uh, private companies that get federal funding. Um, it's, you know, the government funds billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in, in scientific research every year. So when they said, um, look, you know, anybody who receives our funding has to, has to publish now uh, in basically in, in, in open source, that was a real um, shift in the, in, in the culture and in policy, right? So um, that's why there is now, uh, you know, a lot of uh, work being done to, to build infrastructure as to how can we comply, right? How, what are the best ways to comply? So let, let me back up again a, a little bit more. I don't want to get too, too much ahead of, of myself here. But um, when, the, when the White House de, uh, declared that, or when they were preparing to declare that, uh, NASA is a great agency, uh, really, you know, really such a, a, um, a leading agency. And, and leading is the right word because they, they did take the lead on this open science initiative. Now, uh, in, a, in a later slide, you'll see that all the federal agencies have uh, open science programs, but NASA has actually really um, gone, uh, you know, taken, taken the initiative to, to, to go forward on this, and they have constructed, um, they actually just about a week or two ago released their curriculum on open science. Um, they have... Um, um, they, they, have, they have all kinds of mandates. So uh, the, four, the four basic tenets of open science, the four things, if you, if you only take four things away from this whole presentation today, please have them be this. Open science is transparent. It's accessible. It's inclusive. And it's reproducible. Okay. So again, open science is transparent. So when you do the research, you make it available for everyone to see, you know, you don't, I don't mean you, but I mean, in general, you know, researchers, they don't hide it in a drawer or, you know, you know, um, you know, put it in some kind of computer file that nobody can find, right? It's transparent. That means it's open. People can access it. Um, accessible um, also means, you know, people can access it. But it also means that um, um, people like of all of all uh, walks and educational levels can access it, right? Um, it's inclusive in that you know you can be a citizen scientist and you can still participate. 
You can be a PhD candidate. You can be, um, you know, an esteemed Nobel laureate. Everybody is welcome to actually look at, at the research and, um, and, and participate in it. And then reproducible. So reproducible um, might, might be a term that you're not yet familiar with, that maybe you are since you're on a STEM track, but um, reproducible means that if you, for example, um, when you have hydrogen and you have oxygen, right? You have H2O, right? It, if, you put, if you put hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen together, you're gonna make water. Now, if the next person puts hydrogen and oxygen together and they don't make water, that means that your experiment was not reproducible, okay? Now, we do know that hi putting hydrogen and oxygen together, H2O, is gonna make, excuse me, is gonna make water. But sometimes, um, um, so, um, a few years back, actually at Stanford, um, they released quite a number of reports at Stanford University in California saying that there was a reproducibility crisis. And what that meant was that or what they meant by that was that um, uh, scientific teams were um, were going sort of so so you know so fast and 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 doing research in such a way that um, they would come to certain results, but then if another team tried to reproduce that, tried to do the same kind of results, uh, get the same results under the same circumstances. Uh, they, they were not getting the same results. They were getting different results and they were getting different results in, in a very high percentage, something like 70%. So that's why it started to be this, what they call what they started to call a reproducibility crisis. So that's why open science is also trying to, um, to, to, to be a solution for this. So uh, I'm, I know I'm spending quite a bit of time on this slide, but I'm just, I'm just um, trying to kind of put, put things into a, into a framework. So let's just go quickly through this. Open, transparent science is scientific process and results to be visible, accessible, and understandable. Open, accessible science. That means the data, the tools, the software, the documentation and publication to be accessible to all. So FAIR, F-A-I-R, is a term that UNESCO uses a lot, and, and a lot of the pe people in the open science ecosystem use this term. And that means findable accessible, interoperable, and reusable, okay? Now open and inclusive science, it means the process and participants to welcome participation by and collaboration with diverse people and organizations. And open reproducible science is scientific process and results should be open such that they are reproducible members of the community, okay? Let's go to the next slide. Um, I should maybe, uh, I, could, I can stop for a second and just give a temperature check. Does anybody, oh no, there's somebody. Some, I'm sorry, some, I'm sorry, there was somebody in the waiting room. I, I, I apologize if you were in the, in the waiting room for a little while. I was um, on the slide and I wasn't on the Zoom, on the Zoom screen. So, um, so welcome. I, I want to stop there for a second before I go more into the into the top transformed open science. Does anybody have uh, any questions so far? Okay. No. Okay. All right. So um, now we're on our our top slide. So so we've gone over the basic tenets, right? Accessible, transparent, inclusive. We could Again, those are the four. If you, if you take anything away from this presentation today, remember those four basic tenets of open science. Okay. Um, now, the NASA TOPS transformed to open science. This is a division that was stood up. Um, it was kind of started to be organized in late 2020, mid to late 2021. And then it really took off um, starting in, in, in 2022. And in 2023, it really found its legs. Now, um, as I mentioned previously, NASA is, is, is championing open science. So the TOPS program, the Transformed Open Science, has been stood up actually with um, a 40, $42 million worth of funding over a five-year trajectory. So, you know, it's really, it, it, it's under the earth, um, 
it's in the earth sciences division um but it's really its own department with its own dedicated team and they're doing all kinds of wonderful things so um again for anybody who just dropped in you'll find a link to the nasa talks website um in in the chat it's the it's the top chat uh, dropped in our in our in our zoom chat here so um, the, the five-year plan to accelerate open science practices, here's their roadmap. So they want to enable five major scientific discoveries through open science principles. Um, they want to broaden participation of historically excluded communities. That means they want to double the participation of these groups across NASA science. Uh, so again, see, that's a great thing for us at HIAEA. That, that means that what we're doing, working with you guys, is, is um, helping to prepare uh, for what um, you know, NASA wants in its workforce. So you see how these, these things are all working together, uh, which is how it should be. So increase understanding and adoption of open science principles and techniques. Um, support 20,000 researchers to earn NASA's open science badge and accelerate major scientific discoveries. So of course, you know, NASA of course already accelerates uh, major scientific discoveries. So now with open science, if they can do it even, even faster, more collaboratively, um, even better. Uh, you can use this QR code here if you want, but I think it actually may direct to the old um, website. They, they just issued um, about a month ago, this new website. So. Uh, you, you can try that QR code um, or you can use the link in the chat. So, um, all right, now here, here's a slide um, that I've actually borrowed from the program, um, the, the, the program scientist, the NASA top program scientist, and um, her name is Dr. Shell Gentleman. And if you, um, and I, I highly encourage that you do, if you start to uh, <clears throat> excuse me, attend any of their web webinars, they have monthly webinars um, that are um, announced via their talks newsletter. You'll see her speaking, um, her and, and the rest of the team. It's, it's, it's a really great team. Um, but this is her slide, so I will, I will walk through it. Um, but I do want to start with this top quote, and it's from a Yale research team. And it says, we need, we need more we science rather than me science, but openly sharing data, software, and results. So there's just been sort of, you know, an across the board um, recognition uh, throughout um, hundreds of academic institutions across the United States and across the world, actually, um, that uh, open science is the way to accelerate breakthrough uh, you know, technologies and, and, and scientific research. Uh, and, you know, and again, the, 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 the COVID era sort of put a, a big emphasis on, on this, right? That by cooperating and coordinating, we can drive um, the, we, we can drive the acceleration for solution finding, um, basically, ex hopefully exponentially. So, uh, here's our favorite words again, accessible, reproducible, and inclusive. So it creates research that's cited more, has a bigger impact, increases transparency, and is more inclusive. So inclusive science, it means more collaborative projects, access to hidden knowledge, equitable systems, and increased participation. So um, you know, here's our, our nice little diagram. So we have at the center, open science, our favorite words, accessible, reproducible, inclusive. And then we have open data and software. So FAIR, as we talked about earlier, F-A-I-R, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, open access to scientific publications and information. Um, you know, a lot of times scientific research is published and then it's behind the paywall. Um, so that means that a, a large part of the, the world actually has sort of an economic disadvantage in terms of being able to access, uh, uh, you know, a lot of research. 
um, open collaborative analysis tools, open tools, frameworks, and libraries, um, new, new pathways to science, um, expand participation and partnerships, support diversity, equity, and belonging. All right, so see, these are all things that, um, that sync quite well with what we're um, doing at HIAEA. So this is, I think, why this program is um, particularly re relevant to, to what we're doing. And here's the slide credit, Dr. Shell Genton, top program scientist. Okay, so I'm gonna go in, um, we've talked a lot about, um, we've talked about the White House, uh, making 2023 the year of open science. We've talked about the NASA TOPS program, Transform to Open Science, which is its own distinct um, program office within, within NASA and, and within Earth, Earth Sciences Division. Um, now, here's a couple of things that, that on a global level people are, are working on. Um, and I'm gonna talk about some of the, the international organizations that are, are working on these things. Um, Infrastructure is a, is a huge component um, because, you know, you, it's one thing to tell people, to tell not just people, but millions of people, right? We have millions of science, scientists, engineers, and researchers around the globe. It's not just something, it's not just, you can't just say, okay, all of a sudden, you know, drive the car this way, right? I mean, I'm using, you know, um, you know, sort of a, you know, an, exa an exemplary reference. I, I don't mean driving the car. I'm just using that as an example. But if you're asking people to do things a little bit differently, you need to give them infrastructure, right? You can't just say, okay, do everything differently now. <laughs> you, you need to have, they, they need to have structure. They need to have structure. They need to have tools. They need to have infrastructure that will support these new processes. Um, also need funding. Policy is 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 coming down the line um, by from both um, on the on the U.S. Uh, federal and state level, but also on a on a global level. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the UN agencies. We need outreach, right? Um, we need um, things like like what we're doing here today, um, but also you know um, on a on a on a on a micro level, as I, I would call this. But also on a on a, on a larger level, where we're bringing many groups together to 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 understand okay, what is this whole open science thing about? Um, and then fundamentally too, we just um, you know you'll you'll hear a lot of this in the open science uh, ecosystem. We just we need more people. We need more hands, more eyes, more brains. We need more people doing science. It, it's it's not just a it's not just a rarefied place for only a certain amount of people or, or, or you know or a certain kind of people science uh, we're looking to make it more inclusive uh, because the more input input the better right you can always sift through the information more people with diverse experiences to participate so that we ask the best questions and find the best solution uh, and NASA is really Really good about championing this. Uh, I, I really have to say. So, um, if you want to, here's the here's um, the website for the federal government uh, website, and, and that's pretty easy. I didn't put that one in the chat. I can after the presentation, but it's open.science.gov. And um, again, 2023 is the year of open science. Um, Here's some of the eight federal agencies that are participating. As you can see, it's pretty much all the federal agencies, Environmental Protection Agency, U.S. Geological Society, General Services Agency, National Science, National Science Foundation, and NASA, I would say, are really two of the real champions of this. But also the USDA, that's the U.S. Department of Agriculture, NOAA, uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric um, Association, uh, even the Department of State. So, and of course, the National Institute of Health and the um, Centers for Disease Control. So as, as you can see, um, if you go up to this, uh, this site here, open.science.gov, you'll see actually a summary of what each of the um, agencies are doing. Uh, and they're, they're, they're actually doing quite a lot. 
Now, interestingly, too, um, the White House has something called the Office of Science Technology Policy. You'll often see it, the acronym uh, when they refer to that office. It's usually W-H-O-S-T-P. And earlier this year, back in May and June, they held a series of listening sessions that was actually open to the public um, and accessible online via Zoom. And all kinds of um, diverse uh, stakeholders were able to offer their insights into the implementation process and goals of open science. So what it was was a, a whole, like a series of um, four sessions actually, each of them lasting about two hours. And each of the sessions um, had lots of early career researchers, academics, entrepreneurs, publishers, uh, re research and development people, so people from the startup ecosystem, and then, of course, government agencies um, who, who joined in and um, were given, I, I believe it was a three-minute cap. Anybody who wanted to speak could speak for three minutes at a time. And, um, and, and people uh, gave feedback as to um, what were the challenges that they are encountering. You know, because again, as we said in the, in the previous slide, you have policy. You have saying you have policy saying, "Okay, we need to put these practices into place." Uh, but then you need that the research. You need the infrastructure to support that that research. So it was a really it was a very good uh, listening session. And uh, again, it was open to the public. So you know, if you guys wanted to to join in at, on the Zoom and listen in. You would be more than welcome to. So keep your eyes and ears open for opportunities like that, because it's very, very um, instruct. It's a great instructional uh, experience to actually listen to what these people are, you know, are saying, and you know, and how the White House Office of Science Technology and Policy actually, you know, conducts those listening sessions. Okay, so now let's zoom out for a moment. Um, so we've been at the at the um, at the at the tops level, right? NASA agency. We've been more at the federal level with all the agencies. Now we're going to zoom out just a little bit more, and we're going to go to the UNESCO level. So UNESCO is, of course, the the um, education and science scientific arm of the United Nations. Um, their headquarters is actually in in Paris, uh, France, and they are. Um, hugely championing open science. Uh, so they, um, in, in late 2021, they uh, released this open science toolkit and it's designed to support implementation of the UNESCO recommendation on open science. The first international standard setting instrument on open science. So the recommendation was adopted by 193 countries in November, 2021 at the 41st session of the UNESCO General Conference. Now you can go up to um, the UNESCO site. Uh, it's like openscience.unesco.org. Um, you, your teacher, Chloe, has a copy of these slides that she can share with you. And so these, these are hot links. So you can, you can, you can just click, click on here as you, when you get your copy of your slides. Um, but you can also easily find it on the online search. But the toolkits are really are really helpful because they are grouped into different um, sections. Like one will be about um, open data and publishing. Another section is about um, infrastructure. Another section is about policy. And there's all kinds of actual like act, it, it really is a toolkit. It's actual tools of how you can start to implement open science in your own. Research. And the 193 countries, um, I have to, I have to say, the global South is really um, signing on to this in a big way, right? Because um, it, if you, if, if you see science through the lens of sort of, if you see science through the lens of maybe um, economics in, for a moment, then the best funded research institutions are the ones that are gonna be able to make the fastest progress, right? Um, so if, if the best funded research institutions are in the global north, let's just say generally speaking, 
then that means that the global stuff can be sort of left behind sometimes, right? So open science is trying to actually um, be, be a solution to, to you know, be an answer to, to some of that so that the information sharing is more uh, across, um, it crosses global, it, it crosses boundaries, right? Um, so it, it makes this kind of one, one, one people <laughs> across the, the, the whole planet that share in, in, in information and scientific breakthroughs. So um, staying a little bit on, on, a, global, on a global scale, um, the US and European Union um, cooperate quite a bit on open science. Um, the European Commission in, in report in 2016 um, stated, you know, we wanna be as open as possible and as closed as necessary. You know, of course, one of the things is that sometimes scientific research is uh, on the cutting edge of national security um, and also intellectual property, right? So um, they, those are some of the things that, you know, people, that we're all navigating now in this space of, uh, in this ecosystem of open science. How do we be as open as possible, but as closed as necessary if it comes to national security or, or intellectual property rights? Um, uh, again, another example of, of NASA cooperating on a global scale, uh, last summer in July in Geneva, Switzerland at CERN, which is the um, European Research Center for U European Nuclear Research Center. Um, they had a symposium um, called Accelerating the Adoption of Open Science. It was like four days. Uh, you could, again, you could attend online so if you guys are interested in any of this stuff, keep your eyes and ears open because um, you know you could register online and, and attend and attend for free. So if you're ever interested, you know when you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, don't hesitate to just jump in and 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 start to participate. Um, you know, you know virtually in, in, in any of this any of this stuff any of these uh, events. You don't have to have a PhD is what I'm trying to say, right? Um, you, can, you can be an interested person and, um, and participate. Um, the interesting thing too, I wanna say about CERN is that CERN has a really huge place in history in terms of open science and open data. Um, in, on April 30th, 1993, it was CERN that released the World Wide Web to the public. So one of their researchers, whose name is Tim Berners-Lee, proposed this to allow scientists and researchers from all over the globe to share information quickly and accurately. So when, you know, when we're talking about the World Wide Web, right, we're talking about the protocol HTTP, right? Every, pretty much every web address that we go to, these you know, these days, it all it always starts with HTTP or HTTPS. That's the that's the World Wide Web protocol. Now, prior to 1993, it was still sort of um, a closed. It was still sort of a closed protocol. It, it wasn't something that had been openly released. The, the, the real back history is that it was something that started out of DARPA. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the Defense um, Accelerated Research Projects uh, uh, Agency in, in, in the United States, you know, that, you know DARPA does an amazing things. And so they're credited with actually having kind of really had the genesis of, 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 of the internet. But um, by 1993, um, it, it was researchers at, at CERN uh, who you know, had this, you know, were sort of the keepers of the protocol. And why this is so important is that what if what if all of us were using you know hundreds of different internet protocols? What if there wasn't just one HTTP, but you know a hundred different like eight, one was HTTP, one was ZZZ, or one was you know uh, SXY, or you know what if we had all these multiples of, of of internet protocols and we all went to different ones? There would be a lot of um, there wouldn't be a lot of Know, homogenization of the internet. There would be a lot of fractionalization of it. Um, and, you know, just to put that into perspective, 5 billion plus people, so more than 
most of the world's population rely on the internet for research, commerce, entertainment, and communications. So there's a lot to be said for making things open source, um, especially these integral technologies. Um, and so that's what we're looking at with, with, you know, with open science too, that if we make it, if we make these um, really exponential technologies open, then we will have some kind of way to sort of keep it all, um, I, I, get, I don't know if harmonious is the right word, but homogenized or um, what, you know, one protocol for all of us to, to use rather than being so, so fractional, fractionalized. Um, the uh, American uh, Geophysical Union, AGU, um, is a, a very big player. Uh, they've, they've all, they also really champion open science. In fact, just last week, they had a huge conference in San Francisco, and um, their, the motto for the, the, their conference um, was wide.open.science. And they had thousands of exhibitors. NASA and their top team was there and gave three separate presentations. Um, the, the whole the whole world was there. So, um, but these are a couple of the things that AGU uh, is is championing. So, community science is is a big part of it. So, they're expanding the traditional role of science by creating opportunities for scientists to work directly with communities through community science initiatives, such as driving earth, earth exchange and community science exchange. So that's something that we can, um, you know, we can work with you on in, you know, at, at, your, at your school, at your high school level, through HIAEA. In fact, I would say that HIAEA is a good example of community science. Uh, um, and then also then, you know, global collaboration. We talked a bit about UNESCO and CERN and NASA. So open science aims to improve scientific collaboration across international boundaries, right? AGU is leading the development of an ethical framework for climate intervention research, experimentation, and deployment, a code of conduct to guide measures that may be needed in addition to emissions reduction. So again, you know, if we have global, when we have global problems, as um, many recognize climate issues to be, uh, then we need global solutions. Right? You, you know, you can't just uh, create a solution for, 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 for the climate in one section of the world because it's going to impact uh, everyone else. Um, here's a few other additional resources. Again, in, the, in your slides, you'll have these hot links. Um, I did include Jupyter Notebooks just because s some of you may be really into, into data and maybe coding. And Jupyter Notebooks are sort of the, um, um, the standard uh, for, for uh, you know, open source um, online data keeping. Um, and you can find that at jupyter.org. Uh, this is actually um, someone who works with open source science. Um, uh, Dr. Alexi Krabrov, and um, he's, he's, he's quite a leader in this space. And he says, it, you know, I just wanted to point out about, about science and technology, open, open science and technology. We talked a little bit about HTTP as the protocol and how the internet is sort of the superhighway of information sharing, um, you know, not just for commerce and YouTube and music, but also for scientific research, right? So there, there is this, um, there is this integral collaboration between science and technology in our modern world. So uh, I like this quote: "We aspire to convene these two great community efforts of the modern era by bringing together scientists and technology developers to drive a new open era of progress." And um, you can uh, you can find him at the Open Source Science, which is part of. NumFocus and IBM. So NumFocus and IBM are working together on open data sharing. Oh, again, um, building this infrastructure. They're, they're helping to build the infrastructure. And a lot, a lot of times that infrastructure means technology infrastructure. 
okay um now it was like really just like a week maybe i, I think it was la the week before last um that 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 nasa uh released their new open science 101 um for any of you who have maybe some extra time on their hands in the coming week i really really encourage you to jump right on in and sign up for their um um their their module their open science 101 module uh, you can sign up for it today um, at this link and this link is in the chat um, you can um, uh, you, you can do it self-paced now uh, and there's no cost for it of you know, course it's free and then you can earn badges and certificates this way uh, I, I think that the certificate is actually going to be um, quite uh, you know, a great little thing to add on onto your resume or, or add as a skill, uh, um, you know, as you're graduating or, or working through um, high school. Um, you can also wait for in January if you, if, as of January, they're going to have moderated modules that will be led by um, a facilitator. So if you prefer working with a, a cohort and, and working with a facilitator, then you can, you can do that as of January. Um, so what can you do? I have a couple, I have a few action steps for you guys and I really, really encourage you to do this. You know, again, so open science is a nice idea, but how do we implement it, right? So um, sign up for the TOPS newsletter. Really, 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 I really encourage you to sign up for the top, TOPS newsletter. Again, it's free. It'll come straight to your inbox. It'll give you high level um, overview of what the top team is up to. Also some really cool things that, that the rest of the um, mission directorate, the Earth, Earth Observation Mission Directorate and other mission directorates at, um, at, at NASA are doing. Um, they, it'll also give you the invite and the link to their top online webinars. Um, so I really encourage you guys to, to sign up for the newsletter and then join at least one of the online webinars um, between January and March. Now they're they're monthly, so they're not going to stop in March. But I'm just giving you kind of a bit of a, a, a timeline so that you have you know between you know January, February, or March, you're going to attend one of the the webinars. Um, they they often have a theme, like one of the last webinars in um, November was about how to actually how to how how to make more engaging slides. <laughs> So uh, I learned a lot on that one. Um, enroll in the NASA TOPS Open Science. You know, use uh, choose the, either the virtual or instructor led. And then also, um, you know, I know maybe a lot of you guys are are maybe on 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 Facebook or in Discord, all great places. Um, but uh, on LinkedIn, NASA has a TOPS group. So you know, jump on jump into the talks group on LinkedIn, you know, again, it's free and you can just, you know, you, you can just kind of take a look at what people are saying and, 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 and talking about. Um, now this is uh, an open science cafe. It's not for us today, but I want to include this um, slide just for maybe future reference. It's just an activity. You know, it's a, kind of actually a really fun activity that you can do with, um, you know, some, some of your, your classmates. Um, and it's basically getting together in groups of four. I did this with, um, uh, a, 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 in a workshop last summer, and uh, we actually had a, a really great time. Um, people people um, divided into groups of about four or five people, and then and they, they chose uh, an urgent scientific need. You know, like climate relief or energy justice or replant wildfire devastated lands, and then um, worked in their in their small group on how to, um, you know, on on, on 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 solution engineering, right, for these things, but using using the principles of open science, so infrastructure outreach, fund, uh, you know, funding, um, accessibility, transparency, reproducibility, and inclusivity. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. That's just basically for, for future um, for future reference. Um, and for more of these kinds of activities, I can refer to that UNESCO Open Science Toolkit. It's got some great um, suggestions. And 
And finally, I just want to say, um, I just want to say Melikulikumaka to all of you. Uh, I know that this is kind of, uh, you know, we have a, um, a snowy tree, but saying Melikulikumaka, which is a little bit of, a, of two worlds colliding. And I chose this because I wanted to say that, you know, we can come from different backgrounds and different lived experiences. Um, and we can still find, a, you know, a, a common, we can find a, a common ground um, where we can share in information. And I think uh, that that's what, what open science is really, uh, is, is really trying for, is to, is to bring people in from, uh, you know, different experiences, different skill sets, um, different backgrounds, honor all of that, remain open to listening and learn and really learn, for, you know, really learn from each other. So I, I think fundamentally that's a lot of what, um, what, of, of what open science is about. So um, maybe I'll stop sharing now. And, and, and I know I kind of went long, so <laughs> maybe I went into the, um, maybe I went into the Q&A time. But but oh, oh, open open for questions now. In case if uh, I would if if anybody has any questions, like even if it's just like, hey, how do I how how do I sign up for listening sessions, or where can I get the the NASA top newsletter, and any of that? No question is a bad question. Uh, question. So um, NASA Tops is just the uh, like the NASA part of the Open Science, right? Yes, that's correct, Xander. It it's just it's just the NASA. It's just that agency's um, initiative as to as to what as to what they're doing for with Open Science. But they're that's taking true. a lead. They're they're taking a lead not just within the federal context. They're taking a lead really on a global level. I see. Thank you. Does, does anybody have any um, interest in in learning um, in, in learning more about how to how to implement this um, open science practices in your in your own research? Hmm. So, just a quick question. Um, so this program, you would have to like work with like collaborate with like five other people, like four other people, and we'd have to kind of like solve a solution. Oh, no, that's a good, that's a good question. No, that was just um, a proposed activity. Um, so oh. That, that, yeah. So that okay. that final slide is just it's just a, a proposed activity in order to sort of get a feeling of what it might be. But no, no, there's no, um, there's no, there's no real set. It's a good question. Thanks, Robert. Um, there's no real set prescribed way of doing open science, except that it's transparent, it's accessible, it's inclusive, and it's reproducible. Like those really are the four fundamental tenets. Um, but to be very honest, the whole ecosystem is still trying to, it's still engineering, finding solutions as to how to actually implement and put into practice open okay. science. Yeah. Okay. So basically, if once we do complete our projects, this is a kind of like place where we would share our information and kind of just branch out and see what other people have thought about it, or just kind of share our ideas. Yes. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that, that's okay. really the whole spirit of it. Um, that's right, is to, 
is so that is so that people don't um and so that we, we we foster more of a culture of okay you've made a great breakthrough now share it with your peers um it's, you know science has 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 long been very collaborative um but but there have been sort of structures in place that can sometimes um create a lag uh like 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 sometimes um maybe research like federal labs or research institutions would have like major breakthroughs but then because of like the peer review and publishing system it would be like six months before it got peer reviewed and then another six months before it was published so by the time so between the time of breakthrough and the time that it was actually made public there would be 12 18 months which you know um may not sound that long but i, I again i think the era of the the, I think the COVID era put a lot of emphasis on this of where, you know, it's like, we don't have time. <laughs> we, we don't have yeah. time. Yeah. So that's why uh, with open science, what we're trying to engineer for, what we're trying to build the infrastructure for is so that if you have a major breakthrough, you can, you can publish it and share it right away and still protect your intellectual property. Right. Oh, that's what okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, Chloe, do we have, I don't know, um, what should we do if we have any other questions? I, I would love to see a show of hands. I don't know if you guys are comfortable putting on your cameras, but I'd love to see a show of hands as to how many of you are going to sign up for the top newsletter. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, it's really... I I, I have a good question too for the students, if you don't mind me asking. Yeah, that like at this stage in their projects, you know, before they have results or anything, they're still kind of researching, designing, some even, you know, thinking about which topics exactly they're going to go into researching. How, do you have suggestions about how at this stage they could practice open science? Yeah, that's a that that's a really good question. Um, well, what I would say is, um, what I would say is actually first get a sense of what. Honestly, the first thing I would do is jump into the NASA one, Open Science One Hundred and One, and just get a, a feel of of what it is, and also jump onto the UNESCO and just take UNESCO toolkit and just kind of look around the toolkits and see. Um, because for example, if you're looking at a research, if you're looking to do a research project, even if you just kind of, maybe even just take 20 or 30 minutes to read through some of the open, open data principles, then you might be able to then, mm, as, as, a, as, as a research teams that you're forming right now, you might be able to start putting into place um, what, how are you gonna? How, you know, what are you gonna do with your data, right? Are you gonna keep it on a hard drive on your own computer? Are you gonna keep it in a Dropbox file that's gonna be shared and open access? You know, th those are maybe very simple questions. But thinking about that prior to actually undertaking your your research, um, it, it's gonna set in. It's gonna put in place a structure that's gonna then sort of set the tone for how you're going to be able to, to progress because research research data that's produced by your experiments that's kept on um, your own like you maybe your team leader's hard drive or, or maybe your teacher's hard drive is going to have one kind of a result 
but if you set it up maybe in a in a open you know google cloud by a google drive open access you know um folder or 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 dropbox folder that you know that's going to architect for something else so you know even very simple things like that that's already practicing open science um so so you know you can I guess kind of what I'm saying is you could you could start small by just kind of thinking about about it as you go along. Like how how could we make this more open? You know, maybe even at each step, how could we make this more open? That that that's how I would suggest starting. Okay, well, I guess if there's, if there's no other questions, um, I'll defer to, I'll defer to um, your, your teacher, um, Chloe, it, see, to see if she, if she wants to, if she wants to end, end this session or, um, and then also, you know, um, we're always available through the, through the HIAEA program, you know, office. So um, your teacher is in touch with our, um, with myself and our principal investigator, Dr. Asimov, who's the, the lead on HIAEA. And, um, you know, we're always, you know, we're always here for you guys. We're just really thrilled to have you participating in HIAEA. Um, you know, we really want to see more of this, you know, happen in, you know, in the islands. And, um, and I also want you guys to know, I mean, I know, I know Dr. Asimov tells you this guy, tells you this all the time too, but you know, NASA is really thrilled to have the, these, these programs. Um, you know, the agency, agency-wide, um, they're just really happy to have more participation uh, like this. So, um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, never be shy. Don't, don't, you know, don't be shy about, about participating and speaking up and, 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 um, making your, your, you know, making your presence known because you are, you know, you, you know, you are so welcome in this, in this whole process. Um, and open science is also very much about that. A, a lot of times, even you'll hear a lot, you know, some, a lot of the times you'll hear the NASA team say, you know, Hey, it was our citizen scientists uh, groups that actually had this such and such a breakthrough, or it was thanks to our citizen scientists groups that, that, you know, brought all this climate data, um, to, you know, to the forefront. So um, participation is really, um, you know, it's really, it's really necessary, and it's re and it's really welcomed, and it's 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 not nothing, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. You're very important to this whole process. I think yeah. If there's no other questions, then we can wrap it up and I've already shared the slides to the students so they have access to that and uh, it's okay if you yeah, let them know if they have any other questions about open science things but they can also contact you with that that yeah my students are a little bit shy sometimes <laughs> yeah no worries no worries it's a, it's a lot of it's, yeah it's a lot of information all at once and uh, also I know it's, the, it's kind of the, the end of your day and stuff too so no, I want to thank you very much, uh, all of you, for you know, for for your time and your attention. And um, Chloe, thank you very much for your graciousness to allow me to to present this. And you know, we really look forward to to working more with you guys throughout the the coming years through Hiaea. No, thank you so much, Ms. Donna, too. And yeah, open science, really cool, great stuff, and I love to see it too as a you know, just as a shift in science for myself. So. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Cool. All right. Well, mahalo, everybody. And mele yeah, Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.
Bye.